You're listening to the Running Up the Score podcast. I want to talk about Pete Rose for a second because that's someone that has a good head on his shoulders that made a mistake when he was younger, uh, obviously while he was playing the game. And this guy was one of the greatest baseball players to ever live. What? He was coaching. He was coaching Yeah, at the time. No, but still one of the greatest players. I mean, oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he still holds the hit record. You know. So, And, and I don't think anybody's going to touch it's that. It's a shame he actually had gone on on a lot of media outlets. You could talk about yeah, it. Yeah, well, you know, Pete Rose, you know how it is in, in the radio business and, and, you know, sports media and stuff like that. These guys, they come out with something, a book, uh, you know, whatever. He came out with a book. Uh, it's called Playing Hungry. And... Now he goes on like a media tour, so he basically touched, you know, he he went on uh, Mike Francesa's show, he went on Michael K's show, he went on uh, Mad Dog show on Sirius Radio, um, you know, and this is not I'm not being biased here because I work for Sirius, uh, you know, this is just I I thought this clip, uh, from Pete Rose, was, was telling, basically. And, uh, you know, I, I felt bad for him. And I've always said that I think Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame. I think it's hypocritical that they have 15 artifacts of him in the Hall of Fame, but he can't have, you know, his day. Um, so that that's just me. But I'm going to play the clip. We'll listen to it, and then we'll, uh, you know, react to that. Here's Pete Rose on Mad Dog Unleashed. Do you think you ever get your day at the Hall of Fame? No. You think you ever get your day where you get a chance to sit in a broadcast booth again? No. And, and be at a spring, I, I, or be at a spring training? You know what, Chris? Let's say this. Which bothers you most of all? Here, here's, what bother, here's what bothers me. Spring training? Here's what bothers me. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I played uh, 19 years for the Cincinnati Reds. I got every record that the Reds have. They play on Pete Rose Way today, okay? They play on Pete Rose Way today. I have never been in the clubhouse or the batting cage. At the new ballpark. I'm not allowed. Figure that one out. You're going to tell me that I can't help some young Cincinnati Red player by working with him in the batting cage? So that bothers you more than anything Yeah, it does. It does. It really does. Did the meeting... Here's why it does. Because in the last four years, they had Pete Rose bobblehead night sold out. They had Pete Rose Hall of Fame sold out. They had Pete Rose number retirement sold out. They had people, uh, Pete Rose's jersey retirement sold out. So when they needed me to sell the stadium out four times. Oh, they need you at the All-Star times, game. When they need you then. They sold know. out. I'm allowed on the field. Other than that, I'm not a, I, I even had to pay to watch my son play in, in, with the Cincinnati Reds. I, I wasn't allowed to go on the pass list. What am I, John Dillinger here? They, quit, they put you on the I'm pass the be- list. I'm the best ambassador baseball has today. Okay, because I'm the only guy, to my knowledge, maybe I'm wrong, I'm the only former baseball player that's in the public four and a half hours a day, 20 days a month, talking positive about the game of baseball. And as you know, you have, you can be negative about the game of baseball today for the last five, six, seven, eight years. If you want to be negative about it, you can, and it's justified. Home runs, strikeouts, everything. And and the tennis is down. Yeah, four four years ago. Listen to this one. You won't believe this quote. You might have this quote. You get everything here with these duds back here working for you, okay? Last week, we got a new team in Vegas, a AAA team in Las Vegas. They built them a new stadium, holds 10,000 people. They're averaging 9,800 people a game, okay? As of last week, the Miami Marlins are averaging 9,300. Yeah, it's a joke. It's, uh, the, the Florida baseball is a mess. So you are upset. This still bothers you. Yeah, the sure ballpark, it was, because I can ballpark, help baseball. being involved, spring training, that bothers you more than a Hall of Fame? Yeah, because I, I'm not going to get on your show, Chris, and, and, and complain about the Hall of Fame because I screwed it up. I made the mistake, okay? It's in the book. I made the mistake. So why am I going to get on your show and whine to people? I'm willing to go on with my life, but there's some people who want to live in the past. Life's too damn short yeah, to I, worry about things. And they need you, they call you. They, put that... they need me, they call me. Yeah. But now they're now they're out of need. With me, Bench, Morgan, and Perez. We all had our numbers retired. We all got in the Reds Hall of Fame. We all got statues. And we all had our jerseys retired. So there's the only but... thing we got left is, is an anniversary. So, 
I mean, it's the truth. I mean, you're allowing this guy to come to the you know the ballpark just for your own you know your own help basically like you know all right let's do let's do a Pete Rose uh, you know bobblehead night. Well, I can really go in for a very long time right now about the Cincinnati Reds and the success that they have had over the last ten to fifteen years. Yeah, you probably could use a Pete Rose in your Absolutely. locker room. You really could in your clubhouse, I guess is the best way to put yeah. it. Locking room club, whatever. But, I'm, you know, I'm saying, you know, the point coming across here now is that the Cincinnati Reds have not been a successful organization by any means. And you probably could use someone like that. And he's right. He did make a mistake. Folks, we've talked about how a referee just two days ago made a mistake. We're human. We've all made them. Now, granted, should he belong in the Hall of Fame? That is a debatable question. I personally believe he should. A lot of people out there believe he shouldn't, and they have every right and every reason to believe that. And without a doubt, that's the way it is right now. Well, and he's come to conclusion with it, and he, he absolutely has. has understood that. But there's no reason to take him out of the Reds organization altogether, only for when you need him and you need to sell out the crowd. Like he said, it has been a tough thing to do, especially in other cities as well and we've talked about this oh, i yeah, told absolutely. you non-stop about how the baseball uh attendance is going down and about how you know when you're signing these guys to incredible contracts like that it's just it's very hard to buy these seats even for just a middle class person well when it comes down to it you know i i, I like the fact that he's you know accepted that he's not going to get into the whole thing he's accepted it and he goes on in that conversation that he basically says, I I won't be in the Hall of Fame in my lifetime. It might change in my kid's lifetime. And he said, he's like, I got grandsons. I, I got my son that's named Pete Rose. I have my grandson that's named Pete Rose. And he, he goes on to say, he's like, I'm going to write a, a letter to everybody I did wrong to in Major League Baseball. And apologize and leave it for when I pass so that my kids can have my day. So he also goes on and, and basically, like like I said, like, he, he, you know, he, he's accepted that he's not going to make it in. And, you know, he says life is too short. But it's funny of because course. you get guys like, you know, Terrell Owens that's crying and crying and crying until he finally does get into the Hall of Fame. But that's not here nor there. Um you know, when it comes to Pete Rose, I absolutely think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Absolutely think he's, he should be in the Hall of Fame. If there's anybody that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, it's Pete Rose. Yeah, he was one of the best it's, hitters it's, to it's, ever live. It's Pete Rose. And you, like, if you listen to him, okay, the guy has such a knowledge for baseball. Such a knowledge. And, and it, like, for me... That loves the game of baseball. Well, like you said, he went into an excerpt talking it's, about confidence and, well, that's, and slumps. And that's what it, I was going to get into. Um, I don't know what show he said this on, uh, but I saw it in a tweet. And basically he said that he would monitor which opposing outfielders were struggling offensively. Then he would often try taking an extra base against them, figuring they'd be distracted, thinking about their slump. I mean... I how many of you thought of that? <laughs> like, how many of uh, how many of these baseball players have thought of something like that? I can guarantee none of them. And he says, he, like, because I listened to some of uh, the Michael K interview too, and he basically said he's like, baseball isn't played the way it used to be played. He's like, if I was to tell, if I was to go up to a baseball player now and start showing him something, I can guarantee you he didn't know. He like. He was basically saying that there's no two strike approach anymore. You have two strikes on you. You shorten up and you try to take it the other way, take it wherever the pitch is, you know, and keep the the at bat alive. He's like, you know, they're they're worried about dropping their their bo- their back shoulder, you know, their their back elbow and trying to shoot for the stands. He's like all it is is strikeouts and sh- and home runs. Yep. And it's the truth it, it, it is right now. He's he basically said that there's no there's and it's not it's not all players no but he was saying but like for the most part without a doubt he was saying that there's some non home run hitters that are still hitting 18 20 home runs now 
And he's like, you didn't see that back then. You know, if you were a non-home run hitter, you had maybe one, maybe two. You that's know, because and, that's not what your approach was. No, that's And that that's wasn't your role. And a part, part of a great successful baseball team is to have role players. You know, we don't, you know, like for the New York Yankees, for example, you know, uh, who's the red-haired kid? Clint Frazier. I've never seen anybody go oppo as well as he's been able to. I mean, can, have you seen his... I know his, his swing. Speed? I know, and his swing. Of course, it's, it's and he's adding home runs to it. And there's nothing critiquing it, but he is a great his hitter. Home, his home runs are like bullets, uh, though. Of course, like he's hitting the ball hard, and he's having trouble in the outfield right now. And he's he's the talk of trade talks right now. But that's what you. That's why you work on players, and that's why exactly. they need somebody in the Cincinnati organization like Pete Rose to work on players. To be able to get these guys better, see where they're lacking, and go from there. Now, obviously, like you said, Clint Frazier's having a hard time in the outfield. That'll come with work. Yeah, you know. And I just hope they don't get rid of him because I, I mean, right now that's what we're hearing. Well, yeah, that, I mean, I understand all the, talks. you know, but I just, you know, I want to go back to Pete Rose and just yeah. the impact that he's done on the game of baseball, and he was one of the best hitters to ever live. Now, granted, the game was so different back then, uh, but at the well, same time, said, to like, hit the averages that he hit is unheard of now. You maybe got like two or three people in the league that'll go to that level, and then his career average is scary. Yeah. And these are the records he holds. And now they're Cincinnati Red records because the Reds haven't had anything relevant in the last 20 years. And a big part of that is because you've had him out of the organization. Well, it's just funny because like, – If I was a Cincinnati him. Red fan, I'd be so on this Pete Rose train to get yeah. him back here. And yet there's nothing being uh, – Well, like he, he was saying, he's like, you can't tell me that I can't help uh, you know, a young Cincinnati Red hitter. Or anybody, you know, altogether. I mean, exactly. I, I ha- like as a baseball player now, how could you not want to sit down and spend a day, a day with Pete Folks, Rose? And I would want to do it. Mind? So why wouldn't the average I, I baseball mean, player want to do you it? You have you have during the playoffs, Fox Sports. They have Alex Rodriguez. They have Pete Rose. They have David Ortiz. All these guys that you would love to sit down and just. Be a fly on the wall in a discussion of baseball between these guys because they love baseball. Pete Rose loves baseball. Alex Rodriguez loves baseball. And you you look at guys like Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter doesn't want any part of baseball unless he's owning it. He's making money off of, uh, off the Miami Marlins. I don't know what he's doing over there, and I think I'm he's hurting sure, his I'm he's hurting his legacy. Pretty sure I'm not. No, he's not making money. I'm not even joking. <laughs> well, There's no it's, way. It's, it's just funny It's impossible because, to be making money with that organization right now. Like on the Michael K show when he was talking, he was like, "Who well, is probably, the I don't who know. is who's the greatest shortstop ever in baseball?" And you know, Michael K's like, "Well, you know, you could say Jeter, you know." And uh, you know, what's his name said um Peter Rosenberg said Cal Ripken. But um he goes, "No." You would want to start your team with Alex Rodriguez. He's like, the guy has 2,000 more runs, 2,000 more RBIs, and he's hit 697 home runs. Why wouldn't you want to start a team with a guy like Alex Rodriguez? You know, the game is so hard to analyze, and that's the biggest problem, Jerry. It's it's such a hard game to analyze. Like, You can't analyze Alex Rodriguez's success because he hit home runs off eighth inning guys. The fourth yeah, guy in that, a bullpen. I don't care about those. That, but that – you have to really look at uh, Alex Rodriguez, though. Alex Rodriguez, I mean, if he didn't have the problems with his time in Texas, people would say that he was the greatest baseball player alive. Easy. It's just such a hard game to analyze. It's so hard to say who the best player ever was. But again, like it goes but right it back. To, it go, but it goes guy. right back to the being about the guy, and well, it's like, got to be more about the team he in these says, games. Pete Rose says Babe Ruth is the greatest ever to live, ever to live. He said that he met because um, Babe Ruth's daughter just passed away recently. But um, I think two years ago, he said or something like that. Um, he was down at Cooperstown. Obviously, he can't go to the Hall of Fame. He was doing a signing down the block, and Babe Ruth's daughter was at – she was like 77 or whatever it was, and she was at Cooperstown, and she walked down the block to go meet and talk to Pete Rose. And he said – it like, you know, he goes on, and he's like, I, I've met 
seven different presidents. I've, you know, sat in front of a, you know, a federal judge, this and that. And he's like, I've never been so nervous in my life than I was talking to Babe Ruth's daughter. It, it's it like, I, I, I was just actually, a guy that loves the game. It, and it's like to, have, to keep him away from it is just, exactly. it's just like, a crime to baseball. This is, and obviously this is a guy that baseball needs. Yep. And like he said, they need him. He's a guy that talks, he talks up baseball. Baseball needs a guy that talks up baseball, mm-hmm. especially at this time. Yeah, and you're doing everything you can to bring him down. And and the fact that he's staying up there, good, good you for know, you. It, it's good for him. You've been listening to the Running Up the Score podcast. For more Running Up the Score, go follow the show on Twitter and Instagram at R U T S Sports.